technology is constantly blurring the lines between the real and the unreal world. Nowhere is this more visible than in movies, where superheroes fly through the air and fantastic creatures become our most beloved friends. Our Globus today is at the front lines of such innovation, having worked as a technical director at ILM, a division of the George Lucas Company, Hong Jie Char has collaborated on the special effects of such Hollywood blockbusters as Iron Man, Transformers, and the Pirates of the Caribbean. Now as a CEO of his own company, Robopix Digital, he talks about the future of digital entertainment and the role he will play in creating fantastic realms that exist in the minds of those who dare to dream. Welcome to The Globalist. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful for you to be here. Um, you are based in San Francisco, but you come to Korea quite often. Um, but also, looking at your background, uh, it includes the household names like Star Wars, Iron Man, Transformers. Um, but what is your role in these kind of movies? My role at that time was we called Creature Technical Director. It's kind of a long name. Creature technical director. It's simply, you are giving a life oh. to digital creature. So oh, creature yeah. term meaning characters, humans, animals, even non-existing creatures. It's all called the called creature. For example, on, let's say, Star Wars, which creatures have you brought to life? That's a good pick because Star Wars is a lot of creatures. Yes, they do. You know, Yoda is creature. A lot of robots, a lot of you know, monsters, you know, Vader, and, and even you know, flying Jedi. They're all actors, actually, mm -hmm. but they cannot actually spin in the air, right? Yeah. So they, they cannot jump, they cannot, you know, doing a lot of crazy actions. It's all digital. Oh, and so that means like Iron Man, when he flies around, of he's course. also a creature of sort. He is a creature. Uh -huh. So, for example, in terms of Iron Man, so actor was actually wearing nothing oh. but black suit. So we had to create all the armors and, and metal gears with the digital. Mm. So I, I hear it's now a green wall instead mm -hmm. of a blue wall now. Because you used to call it, you know, you take photos in front of a blue, we have a blue wall here. Yep. But it's now everyone sort of stands in front of a green wall. Yes, there's a reason. So past years, yeah, they've been using blue one too. But in terms of you have to take out your foreground you know, footage from background. Mm. That's the reason why they started using blue. But green one with the bright green, actually, is really, really easy to get that foreground element out of your, your background. Mm. So that's why we are using green right now. Well, green wall is just one of these things, but computer graphics has just come such a long way. Mm -hmm. So how do you see how far it has come? Um, compare what you would do in the earlier parts of your career to what you would do now. A lot has been changed, I think. I was starting my career 20-something years ago already. At that time, it's really difficult to get into the, the industry in terms of person or and company mm. because there should be a software. It's mm -hmm. a computer thing. So without software, you cannot do not, you know, anything. Mm -mm. So at that time, company like ILM and other big companies, they had to develop their own software, mm. which is really challenging. Mm. And there weren't that much commercial softwares mm. for students and other small companies. Right now, everyone's using commercial software. It's mm. cheaper, it can do more than big companies' proprietary software. So commercial software meaning something you could buy off the yeah. internet, yes. an app you could buy off the internet. Yes. You can even rent. Very mm. cheap. So ILM 
It's the company uh, Industrial Light, Light and, and Magic. Magic. It's a company created by George Lucas, who is sort of the pioneer of so, all of this um, computer graphics. You, you got a job there. Tell us how you got the job, what you learned, and what was the experience like? It was an amazing journey, but simply I got lucky. You know, <laughs> a lot of people want to go to ILM. Yeah. I was one of them. I went to school in San Francisco. Mm graduated and working at small gaming company at that time. So we actually apply ILM every other month or something because mm. they hired a lot of people and of course a lot of people got rejected. So I applied so many times. At one point they called me. Mm. So I was kind of like, you know, surprised really. And then I got a job interview and I, I got into the company. So were you a Star Wars junkie? I don't know what you call them. It, it's, it's not a Trekkie, but it's a, I mean, were you a Star Wars junkie all along? Definitely, I was a big, 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 huge Star Wars children. <laughs> Child of the <laughs> yeah, Star yeah, Wars yeah, generation. Yeah, I was, I was eight years old. I went to movie theaters with my father and my sister. I watched Star Wars first one. I was blown away. Oh. So I've been dreaming to make such a film, not like, okay, I should go there and I should work for the Star film. I never, never imagined that, but that happened. Mm. So yeah. here you are, you yeah. find yourself actually working for George Lucas. Um, so what did you learn there? I mean, what, what was that experience like? It was a great experience, almost 10 years, at, 10 years at the company. You know, most of my stuff that I'm doing right now is all from that company. And the culture and their pipeline, their technology, and you know their passion, everything. Mm. Everything I learned from there, I'm still you know striving with that. Mm. So, what do you think of Avatar? Yeah, the 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 way of water. Mm -hmm. How do you look at that as in terms of the technology that it has um, broken and? I think it, it's best ever so far. When I was in Creature Team at the company, we are trying to solve the problem. Problem meaning try to make it more realistic. Mm. We try to solve the problem with physics, not with artistic eye. So it's all calculation. Mm. So for example, we are human, right? We are mixed with, with bones and, and, and skins and muscle inside. We have fascia, we have mm -hmm. water on our skin between your fascia. So all those things can be reflected to digital creature. So, the so with, with these like little sensors that you, you put sensors on people to really get that data. We get that data from there too, but at the same time, using that data, we actually simulate again, because we are under the you know circumstance of of moons and and mm. we have gravity, oh, the, yes. all that stuff, right? So if we get old, our skin gets you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. loose. But same thing, you know, when we get the data from actors, we call it motion capture. Uh -huh. Right now, they're actually capturing really details of your facial expression too. So we get the capture data to the character, and then we simulate mm. with gravity and all that skin sliding, you know, all that difficult word is coming. <laughs> but Avatar, mm -hmm. Sigourney Weaver is not exactly Sigourney Weaver, the Avatar. It goes beyond just collecting the data from the person. Yeah, right? so when you're in the shooting stage, you put a lot of sensors on the, on the actors and try to get all the information from that person. Once we get the data, and we have a digital version of Sigourney Weaver, mm -hmm. of course it's kind of like blue, tall yeah, yeah. creature, right? Not human. But those data will go into that characters and creatures, and then they simulate and they clean up and they recreate the creature based on the data. So. Wow. It seems like these days the computer graphics is, is sort of taken over mm -hmm. how good a, a movie is. Mm -hmm. You sort of judge how good a movie is or not by their use of computer graphics. Is that sort of how it's evolving? I think so. I mean, talking about the uh, 60s, 80s movies, I saw when I was young, there's a King Kong movie. King Kong. still King Kong, but yeah. it's like, you know, people wear some <laughs> costume yeah, and try to a mask, yeah. and they're actually in a monkey costume. Exactly, but that's the visual effects too. That's called the VFX. But at the same time, time goes on, computer gets better and better, and software gets better and better. All the VFX 
tech is coming to transforming to computer. So with that, the uh, development and evolving of computer graphics, nowadays they can create anything they want, like mm. you know, creatures and characters, even actors. You know, mm. there's a one case that famous actor passed away with a car accident in the middle of the filming. Mm. So they had to hire his brother and finish the film and replace the face to him. You could do that with, oh, yeah. with, with a brother? Yeah, yeah. But because brother... Because, because they, have a, they look similar? Well, I, I don't see their face look similar, but they're another area, something similar. Wow. Yeah. The, the behavior and their the hair and their, their physique was pretty similar at that time. Mm. So that's what happened on, on, I think it's already 10 years ago or something. Mm. So on the one hand, when you're making a movie, mm -hmm. this kind of technology really allows you to expand your horizon in a way that's, that's never been possible before. I think so, right? especially right now. Even in Korean VFX industry, is I think we are at the same level with Hollywood mm. in terms of quality for audience. Mm. Definitely, if you compare those two, it's a little bit different. The main reason is they have more budget. Mm, mm, mm. But Korea, Korea has own market size. The budget cannot be the same as Hollywood visual mm. effects industry. But with that budget, we can create that quality. Mm. It's an amazing thing. So for a viewer, mm -hmm. um, how does, how does that change my experience mm -hmm. of watching a movie, of, of watching the storytelling? It gives you more freedom to create your content, definitely. Especially, you know, there was some time that creating digital human was totally impossible. Creating mm -hmm. digital water was totally impossible. Collapsing a building was definitely impossible, right? Because they, they had to build a small miniature and actually put the bomb inside and explode it with the yeah. high-speed camera uh. and then recreate that as a huge scale. So that thing happened even 20 years ago. I was doing some Transformers first movie that there was a scene. That's right. Yeah, they were talking about that, yeah. Yeah, there was a building and Transformers is actually collapsing a building inside. So, so, so he's crashing into this building. Yeah, right. The, the robot. Right. The robot the, is... The Transformer. Yeah, crashing the building and then collapsing a whole city. Even that was 2007, we used miniature at the company. So you build a little miniature? Yes, a small thing here, and then actually put that dummy object, go through that building, so everything collapse, and put a small camera inside, so <laughs> took a shooting. Really? Yeah, and then, Definitely take it back again and then put another element like smoke, you know, mm -hmm. small debris, and even human beings. Mm. We all shoot separate way and composite each other. Mm. But now what happens? 100% CG. So you're just in yeah. front of a computer. Yeah. Have you seen well, the Disney film like Lion King or something? Yes. But looking at the film, all those lions and everything looks totally realistic, except they're talking, right? Lion doesn't talk but they're talking, but except they're talking, they look really lion, and they look really living in the desert, living in the Africa, see? Yeah. So it's, there's no limit. The only limit is our imagination, I guess. I think so. It shows us how much is still left for us to do. Mm -hmm. Exciting. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. You are going back and forth from Korea to San Francisco. So you obviously are working on something. What do you have under your belt? I'm actually working on very exciting stuff right now. So my career has started from visual effects for the film, but I had a chance to working on immersive theater project. 
back to 2010. Okay, immersive theater project, which yes. means people sitting in theaters with their 3D glasses? Well, there should be something special. So, for example, we, you go to theater, you just watch the movie. Yeah. There was some time that people wear some 3D glasses, yeah. right? So the movie looks 3D, but they don't like it anymore. This project is something special theater. So all of the environment is covered with screen. We call it dome theater. Mm -hmm. So theater is dome, like mm -hmm. half sphere. So people are standing inside of the dome so they can watch the content all over the place. Mm. So that project was in, in Macau. Mm. So we had to create 15 minutes short animated film. It was really successful. And I was kind of like, okay, this is the future of our digital content industry. Mm. So ever since then, the VR came out yeah. after three, four years later. Yeah. And now we have a really, really advanced immersive you know, tech industry is, is happening right now. Um, we've had guests on the show who talked about a 5D mm -hmm. um, theater, mm -hmm. and he's talked about, we know about IMAX. Mm -hmm. um, is it along these lines, or is it the same, or is it a different type of theater? It's a experience? part of the immersive theater thing, but right now it's more advanced. So for mm. example, if you go to 45 d theaters, you still have the same format of theater. Yeah, yeah. You just watch front. Well, right now you see a little bit of side. side yeah. You watch on the mostly front with some, some you know, moving chair. But modern immersive tech is more than that. So all of the place is screen, and your movement of the chair is a little, little bit more wild. So it is another level of theater with more immersive environment. Okay, so first, for a person like me, walking into this theater, how would my experience be different from going into a, a normal movie theater? So in normal movies, you watch as a third person. I'm right? in my seat, I watch the, the screen in front right. of me. So yeah, we, let's talk yeah. about Avatar 2. Okay, Avatar 2. You're underwater, right? Yeah. But you're watching the water through something in front of you, probably glass or something. That you're not feeling like you're really in the water. No. Right? But the difference between immersive theater and normal theater is you should feel like you are in there. You are in the water if it is Avatar. If you're a Star Wars film, you're actually in the, in the space and you're, you're flying with the aircraft and <laughs> something like that. So it's an immersive content. It's a little bit different than traditional content. We've tried it before, and people didn't think it was great because it made them a little dizzy. It, they, they sprayed water on people, and, and it didn't really feel like you were in water. But how is this going to be different? I think it's part of the technology. Uh, we have a projector. You, everyone knows that movie theater has a projector. Yeah. You're projecting one surface. Right now, we have so many different type of projection systems happening. Like you can project anything to anywhere. Like if it's a curved screen or if it's a dome screen, it's a spear screen, yeah, anything can be projected already. So based on that environment, content creator has to create different way. Imagine that you just create content with 16 by 9 ratio mm -hmm. of traditional film format and you project it, everything will be distorted. So when you create the content, that content should be fit into that environment. It's a little bit, little bit complex and it's, difficult. It's, it's, I haven't been able to really imagine it yet, but I guess pretty soon I'll be able to imagine it because I'll be able to experience it. Of course, of course. Oh, yes. Interesting. Yes. But why are you doing it in Korea? Besides the fact you are, you are you know, this is where you're from, mm -hmm. why Korea? So basically my you know, active background is mm -mm. that country, but at the same time I'm Korean. So. That's the first reason. Mm -hmm. The second reason is Korean content, the power of creating Korean content, the creators, creativity, is I think the top of the world. Content, what are you talking about? The stories, IP, intellectual property. Mm. You know, we have a lot of different sources of creating IPs, such as Webtoon, such as Korean K-drama, K-film is doing really well in, in Hollywood market. So what you're talking about is taking Korean webtoons, drama, stories, and then making them into that immersive experience 
for a global audience. Exactly, that's what I want to pursue for oh. next project. Can you talk about your next project in any way? Of course, of course. At some degree, yes, I can release my, uh, my project. Last year, I had a chance to work on one of the immersive content projects in Korea. Mm -hmm. It's actually opening in April mm. 2024. Mm. This year? Yeah, this year. In, in a few months, in a yeah. couple of months. In yes. a couple of months. And all the people who worked on this project was all Korean. Okay. So there were four or five Korean vendors, uh, very talented Korean writers and, you know, all the producers, all Korean. And this project is actually a global project, I think, because it's around the Incheon Airport area. I created the IP, I created the story, and served as creative director. So it's a theme park? It's kind of like theme park, but it's not really not, theme not, park. Not really a theme it's park? more like half somewhere between theme park and exhibition. And everything's digital, everything's okay. immersive. There are so many different type of immersive theater. Mm. So screens in there. I think we have 15, 16 rooms mm. in there. I mean, it's very hard for us to imagine because something that, that we haven't seen before. But for example, like technology, we had just finished CES in, in Las Vegas mm -hmm. and the sphere apparently was the big hit yep. of, of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Is that a sphere type of thing that is that we're going to see in... Um... For this project, unfortunately, we didn't make it because of the budget limitation. Creating that sphere, that size, amazing, right? You yeah. don't have that budget. So, but we'll try to do similar. So people get in there and try to experience that you're really in there, oh. in that, you know, content. So, for example, if you create ocean, you should feel like you're in the middle of the ocean. If you're in the space, you should be really like, okay, I'm in the space, you know, so something mm. like that. Very limited budget, but we did our best to work with all the Korean vendors. And I'm actually excited to see how it comes out because uh -uh. I served mostly at the pre-production, uh -uh. like, you know, creative story and some you know, development and some, you know, team organization thing. So my role is over already, but you know, Korean vendors are actually finalizing the product. Mm. So I'm really looking forward to it. Wow. So you're taking sort of the cake content that mm -hmm. is already, you know, the world is pretty excited about, mm -hmm. and you're giving it new life? See, think about the movies, you know, TV shows. People tell the stories with certain characters and certain mm -hmm environment with certain background. It's the same thing. We are trying to create the immersive story that people can get into more on that mm -hmm. environment and, and on that character and even audience can create their own stories in that environment. It's called interactive content. Oh, wow. Think about that you are actually in the movie and you are one of the characters. Yeah. And you are trying to do by yourself like, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that and the whole story structure is changing. And everything will be recorded on your, your story. Mm. And you can publish it to the public. And you suddenly become an actor and director. So that environment is the part of the, uh, our you know, project that yeah. we are trying to create new type of digital entertainment wow. environment. It's a very proactive kind of entertainment. It's mm -hmm. not you're just sitting back and, and sitting, seeing something on a screen. Mm -hmm. And you're looking to create this somewhere in Korea at the moment? Not even Korea. We are talking to uh, US too, oh, really? New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Oh. And even go to Southeast Asia, like Malaysia, Taiwan, Hong Kong. Yeah, we are all talking. With them. You know, looking at the, the popularity of Sphere, I mean, I, I really definitely see how this is the, the exciting future of entertainment, experiencing entertainment. Of course, yeah. of course. If it gets cheaper, yeah, every, yeah. everywhere. <laughs> it should be everywhere. And, and you are sort of, you know, on the road to making that cheaper and, and more accessible to everybody. Yeah, exactly. It's accessible is very important uh, because if you want to enjoy the Sphere, you really have to go to Las Vegas yeah. right now. But if we have that type of theater everywhere, 
with a lot of different content, it's going to be a different level of entertainment. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Even in my old age, we'll see, I'm always open to new experiences, and I hope that will be an exciting and enjoyable one. Thank you. My pleasure. And that's it for me. I will be back next week with another globalist who is putting Korea on the map. Sonji out.